What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and we are here today with the series finale of Pose. This is season three, right? No, this is season four. What season is this? No, it's season three. Season three, episode seven, and the episode was titled Series Finale. And it was a two hour episode, so this is going to be a lengthy review, gotta say. This review, this episode was very emotional from beginning to the end. But before we even get into the review, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys are not subscribed to the channel, what are we doing, you guys? Why we keep going on dates? And why am I the one paying for his meal that you, you know, you invited me on this date that I'm paying, right? Subscribe, you guys. And hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. Now, with that being said, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about Pose, the series finale. All right, you guys, the series finale. Can't believe it crept up on us this soon. Seven episodes. <clears throat> Honestly, I wish... It were long. I wish this, you know, it was longer. I wish that we had another season or two or three. I just wish we had more. You know, originally, I, you know, when Pose first came out, I didn't get into it because when I read about it, I'm like, I don't know anything about ballroom. I don't know anything about the houses. I don't know anything about any of that stuff. Now, I do know people. I do know, you know, I do have friends who are definitely, you know, have their own houses. But I never really understood it in depth until I watched this show and I watched the documentary. And, you know, it's just opened my eyes to a lot of things from the 90s, you guys. With the 90s, I was, especially when this show first, you know, the, the time era that it first started. And I wasn't even, I don't think I was born when season one, was season one and season two was in the 80s. I was born in the late 80s, so I don't really know that time period that well. And then the 90s, I do know that time period, but I was a little bit of kid. You know, I do remember on television, they would always have, you know, especially like with the end, like the 1992, I believe, it was the NAACP Awards, when Sinbad was dressed as a huge condom, telling people to be safe. I remember that. Um, what else? It was just a lot of things that I do remember. And I do remember, you know, what the AIDS epidemic was. I, the first time that I really knew about it, was when I watched, because I watched The Real World as a kid, I don't know why. I think because my co I have older cousins who watched that show, so I would inadvertently have to watch it because I was being babysat by them. But I remember Pedro, and I remember Pedro had AIDS, and not long after filming, he passed away. And like I said in another review, I didn't realize it at the time, but I definitely knew someone who died of AIDS. I did not know, I didn't know at that time that's what he died from, but I'm pretty positive that's what it was because he was definitely a part of the community. I'm just trying to remember if he, I don't know if he was trans or if he was a drag queen, but I think he was a drag because there are times that I definitely do remember seeing him outside of, you know, him dressed up. But when he dressed as a woman, he looks great. But yeah, this show, amazing. I'm definitely going to miss this show. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the episode. So we see um, Blanca and Judy, so they're at the hospital, and Judy went to tell Blanca that Pray Tell was there in the hospital. And the reason that Pray Tell is in the hospital is because at this point, Pray Tell has pneumonia. And, you know, his body is so weak and is not able to fight off the pneumonia, so he feels that this is it for him. And, you know, Blanc is just like talking to him. She's like, what can I do to make things better, you know, make things easier for you? And, you know, he tells her about, you know, his Aunt Jada having his will and, he, and she knows to contact her. He also tells her, you know, I want to wrap up, I want to finish this panel for the AIDS quilt. So that's what they work on. So then we also see Blanca. So Blanca has a patient by the name of Troy. And that's who, that's actually, that's who she was with at the, when, um, when Judy came to get her, she was with Troy. So Troy's tongue, you know, he he was actually, looked like he was on the decline as well because, I mean, his tongue, I forgot what she said that was on his tongue, but his tongue, I mean, just his overall appearance, you could tell that he was, you know, succumbing to the AIDS at that time. So then later in the episode, he comes back and he is looking different. Tongue is clear, skin is, 
you know, clear. He looks healthy. He looks good. And he tells Blanca that he, because he actually asked Blanca earlier about the trial. And that's when I, I had a question. I'm like, what year is this? Because it's, cause I've done, I, I did a little research a few weeks ago to see, because I remembered them saying that eventually the show would end at a certain time. So I was like, are they going to talk about, where'd that book come from? So, mm, the trial, I was like, when did that happen? So I looked it up, it happened late 95, early 96. So he tells Blanca that he was able to get on the trial for the cocktail. And so we see Judy and Blanca and Chris talking. Blanca, I mean, not Blanca, but Judy is upset because they're talking about the fact that with that trial, they were only giving it to white people. They weren't, you know, putting black people or Latin people on there to, you know, see how it works for them. And it's just really interesting to see where they were in 1995 and 96 and where we are in 2021, where so many people who do have HIV or AIDS, they're able to live long, healthy lives and they get them on their, you know, their um, medication as soon as, you know, they get them on their medication very fast. So it's just very interesting. Very, very interesting how it went from only white people to now any, you know, everyone who is affected by it can get the help that they need. Very interesting. Um, so, you know, at this point, they want to go talk to the boss. I'm pretty sure, you know, probably the chief of staff. So they go talk to her and they're like, you know, we want pray tell on, you know, that trial. Like, it's fucked up that you guys have all these white people on here, but when it comes to the black people and the Latin people, nothing. They just have to sit back and die, which I still don't get that. That's, if, you, if, if you have a clinical trial, now I get it, you might want to give it to a select few people to see how the trial runs before you go, you know, um, full throttle with it. But once you see that what you're doing is literally, a, you know, having a positive impact on people's lives and they're not dying. They're actually getting back to, you know, they're gaining weight. They're, you know, their their body's able to fight off any immune disease that they could, you might can't, like, it's just, it's interesting to see that. And it still happens, you know, but it's just interesting. Like even with COVID, like with these vaccines at first, they were, we ain't gonna talk about that, but, it's just interesting. Do these kids not go to school? Seriously, do they not go to school? Okay, you guys. Um, yeah. So, yeah, the chief of staff, she eventually said that she'll make a few calls for Prey. And Chris says, nope, we want you to make a call for um, Prey and for Blanca. So we find out that Blanca and Prey both got a spot, but Blanca feels that her spot should have went to someone else. And I'm like, no, Blanca. Which, Prey Till did say something, now I'm thinking the same thing. When it comes to Blanca, Blanca got diagnosed before him, but Blanca is in great health. Like, she hasn't had any issues. Like, what, I mean, she hasn't had any issues from what we saw. I mean, we know that one time she took that AZT pill, but... Like she has not had anything like Frey Tell, but and they never they never really explained that, but whatever. But yeah, so Blanca, she's just worried about, you know, this pill. You know, she's talking about they gave some birth control pills to women in Puerto Rico and some of them died. She also mentioned the Tuskegee Airmen, you know, Tuskegee when they gave them the, the medic, you know. It's so crazy how they mistreat us. But we're going to move on. All right, you guys. So after, you know, we find out that Blanc and Praytel got put on, the, you know, the um, trial, we see Praytel and he's walking down, you know, he's strutting down the street, just looking good, looking like him, himself. And we see Ricky. So they, you know, this is the first time they meet each other since, they're seeing each other since, I guess, Angel's wedding. And they're just talking and Praytel's talking about, you know, he's on the drugs. You know, he feels like himself. He wants to live his life at this point, you know, no more, um, no more self-pity, I guess you would say. And, you know, he and Ricky both tell each other how much they've missed each other. And, you know, how, you know, Pray Tell talking about how he missed 
performing. Well, you know, he misses performing. He wants to get back into his fashion. He just wants to do. He just wants to live his life, basically. So then we see Prey as he takes Ricky to the gay men's choir that Prey Tell found because you know he was he's still involved with the act up, but he didn't want to be a liability to them with his eyesight when it was fading. So he found the gay men's choir, something that he could still lend his voice to and be a, be out there for the cause, but not be on the forefront, so to speak. So then we also see Blanc and Pray Tell as they're working on the quilt. And she was like, why does it say live, work, live, work, pose, and not pray? So he told her why. Oh, God. It was at this point that I started to figure, I'm like, it was at this point. I'm like, something's gonna happen with Frey Tell. I'm like, it's just, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm like, the way y'all putting this in here, like something is gonna happen to Frey Tell, and it only, it only got worse throughout the episode. So, so then we see Prey and Ricky and the choir. They had the choir over to his place, and they both enjoyed their company. So, like I said earlier, it's gotten Prey to thinking about his life. Well, I hope I got it. I don't think I did. Bitch. I hate bugs. Ugh. And I don't know where that bug came from. You know what? I left my um, patio open the other night. <sighs> Gotta stop doing that. So, yeah. Nope, there it is. Little bitch. <laughs> um... You know, I will say one thing about Ricky. When Ricky was talking about his life, Ricky sounded like me when I was approaching 30. I was looking at my life. I'm like, what have you done? You're almost 30 and you haven't done anything with your life. But then I had to think about it. I'm like, yes, you've done a lot with your life. You are one of the first people, like, in my family. I'm actually, am I the first? I think I am. I was one of the first, I think I actually am the first. Am I? I believe I was the first to graduate college in my family. I think I'm the first person in my family. And when I say my family, I, mean, I don't mean like my immediate family. I mean like my, I think with my grandmother and my aunts and uncles, you know, all of us, like I think I'm the only person. I think I was the first one because my family's so close-knit, and that's why I say that. My family's close-knit. But I think I'm the first one of my family to graduate college. And I actually said that. I'm like, you graduated college. You're the first one to do it. So I didn't, you know, so I felt Ricky when he was talking about he's almost 30, and he hasn't done shit. And Prey gives him a pep talk. And then Ricky unbuttons his shirt. He found a lesion on his chest. I was like, oh, shit. I'm like, that is not going to be good. So then we see Pray Tell and Judy. So Pray Tell and Judy, they were talking. And, you know, Judy, at this point, she's just happy. She has a lot of hope for the future, you know, after so many people had died due to AIDS. And now we have this cocktail that is actually prolonging people's lives. So then Blanc and Chris come in, seeing that they are not accepting new people because of cost. No, what happened is too many black people found, too many black people and, and Latina people, Latino people found out, and now y'all gonna come up with any excuse in the book to not be able to help people that are in desperate need of help. So we see them and they're out protesting, and nothing has changed as far as protesting has from 95, 95 96 to 2021. You know, you still try to protest for equal treatment of black and brown people and you still get beat by the damn cops. Nothing has changed. But you got these white people who go up to the uh, Capitol building and riot and, you know, destroy this shit and nothing happens. Just saying. So then um, we see Blanc and Pray Tell, they're getting ready to walk in a ball. But, you know, they're still just thinking about the fact that with this trial, they don't want to accept new people. So we also find out that Chris is at the end of his lease and Chris will be moving in with Blanca. He's also at the ball, so he'll be watching this girl for the first time. So then we see Blanca and Pray Tell, they go and shut it down. I mean, they shut it down, they shut it down. 
And then this was when it really solidified it for me that Pray Tell was not going to make it past this, you know, first half. Because when he was talking after the ball, they did, you know, they won. After the ball, it was the way he was talking to Blanca and Chris. I was like, oh my God. I'm like, no. I'm like, please don't do it. Please don't do it. Please don't do it. And they did it anyways. So, you know, he told Chris to take care of Blanca and he whispered in her ear, ain't no mountain high enough. And that was the moment that I started, like I literally started crying. What the fuck are they doing? You know what, I should call a school board on their asses. Child Protective Services, somebody. That just don't make no goddamn sense. Your kids can't be in school at one o'clock in the afternoon. And they've been doing this for the last hour. Hope they've been doing this since 11 o'clock. Bitch, are your kids in school, ho? My dad's just rude and disrespectful. Whew, only a few more days left in this apartment. As much as I'm upset about having to move because of my apartment complex, I am so happy to never have to hear these people again in my life. Let's get back to the show. Could they just ruin my mood? For the, um, so the next morning, Ricky went over to Praytel's apartment and whew, he did a, Dylan did an amazing job in this scene. I got to give it to him. He did an amazing job, hands down. Like he, he and MJ, in this episode alone, he and MJ deserve Emmy nominations for their, for their, for their, for them, the acting. It was just phenomenal. Cause Dylan had me boohooing crime. And then, you know, at the hospital when they got Praytel there, which he was already dead. But when they got him there and, you know, Judy told Blanca and Blanca ran to Ricky and he told her, they did everything that they could to revive him. And when she screamed, whew, that pierced my, I mean, it literally pierced me. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I did laugh at that scene, and I'm not, I'm not laughing. I wasn't laughing at the scene because of Blanca or Ricky. I was laughing at the scene because of that nurse in the background because she had her phone. She was on the phone, and she was just like, I'm like, lady. <laughs> she's screaming on the floor like you ain't gonna be like are you like are you okay sweetie like is there anything I can do for you but she's just sitting there I'm like girl where's your bedside manner you ain't got none huh let's move on all right you guys so they have a very very somber dinner but when you lose somebody that you love like you can't even think about eating I remember like I remember when I lost my mom I need for a few days so I mean I know what they're going through and, you know, they're all talking like, like, but pray tell, he was on that medication that you were on. You guys were on the same medication. Like, what happened? And Judy was like, you know, they, you know, sometimes they do give people placebos. And so Poppy was like, so he could, he, he might not have been getting better. It might have just been in his head. And she said, it's a possibility. And then Chris was like, but, you know, the coroner, when they um, examined his body, he said, that that was, you know, the effects of his body. It had been happening for a while. So then, you know, um, they're talking. So Blanca, like I said, Blanca is still on her medication. She, um, you know, they test, they do her, they test her. She's fine. But um, and she says, even you, Ricky, look, you you're getting better. And that's when it clicked in Ricky's head what happened. And when Ricky said, when Ricky started telling the story, I'm like. Oh shit! I'm like, I didn't see, I didn't put two and two together until Ricky started talking, because Ricky was like, you know, um, Praytel told him, because he told him he found a lesion, but Praytel told him that you know he was able to get some extra meds, so he gave them to Ricky, and then they show us a scene of Praytel in the bathroom opening his pill bottles, pouring them in a Ziploc bag for Ricky, and I was like, oh shit. I'm like, when Ricky found that lesion, Praytel took it upon himself to give Ricky his meds, and Praytel just stopped taking his meds altogether. 
So pray tell was not actually getting better. Pray tell was actually declining because he did not stick to his regimen. Oh God, pray tell. And then when Ricky broke down crying, it just whew, took a lot out of me. So then we see um, Charlene, she pays a visit to Blanca and she's brought pray tell's ashes. And she says, you know, she asked Blanca for a favor, which what was the favor? Oh, she has, I, I guess the favor was, so she brought Blanca half of the ashes and she kept half of the ashes. And I guess her thing was, is it okay with you if I do that? And she says, yes. That's what, you know, she feels like that's what Pray Tell would want. So then Charlene also presented Blanca with the locket that Pray Tell made for her and told her, you know, that about him wanting to put, you know, some of his ashes in each of the, um, the lockets and just give it to people who meant something to him. Um, so then we see Blanca and Judy, they are with, you know, the act up, um, with the act, with the act up people and they're discussing the, um, protease inhibitors and they're talking about the protest. So with the protest, what they want to do with this protest is they want to go to the mayor's house. They want to dump the ashes of their loved ones onto his steps and they, wow. Very morbid, but I mean it, it's it's a protest, and you got to do some of the you got to do things that you know you ordinarily wouldn't do to make a change. You know, it's interesting. Like I said, the show watching the show. I'm again. You guys have to remember, I was in ninety five, ninety six. This is ninety six. So in ninety six, I was between the ages of five. I was at the beginning part of ninety five. I was five years old, and then in July, I turned six. So I don't really know anything about, you know, how the change came about. But I'm pretty sure it probably came about through protest. You know, I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Um, but it's interesting. I just wonder what made the change. What made the what made these big pharmaceutical companies go from helping white people who could afford it, or just white people in general? and not really wanting to help black people and brown people. I just wonder what happened. Um, so then we see Blanca. So Blanca has everyone together in <clears throat> to honor Pray Tell's final wishes. She hands out the lockets. She hands out the lockets to the council. She hands out lockets to Judy, to Angel, to Poppy, to Lulu, and to Ricky. And she also gave one to Electra. She let Electra know that you know, Pray Tell at first said not to give you one, but he was just joking. He he definitely wanted you to have one. So she, you know, Pray Tell wrote something for each person. Now I didn't take down what Pray Tell said about each person, but he wrote, he you know, he wrote something sentimental about each one of them. And um, then at the end of that scene, we moved to the, the black, you know, to the men's choir, the gay men's choir, and you know, we see. Um, Sorry, guys, something is on my little thing. We see Ricky performing, and it was really sad again. And then we also saw the protest at the same, we saw the protest before we saw the black men's choir. And, you know, the protest, we see the people dumping the ashes of their loved ones, and we also saw them carry a body. Ooh, God, now that one, I'm like, ooh. If the, I mean, if, if the ashes don't do something to the mayor, I know that damn dead body will, because, I mean, that is a dead corpse. Can you imagine walking to your door and there being a dead corpse and a dead body there? All right, you guys, let's move on and wrap the episode. Up. All right, you guys, and then let's move over to 1998. So in 1998, we see that Blanca and Chris, they are still together. Blanca is no longer working at the hospital with Chris and Judy. She's working at a new hospital. And um, what else? They're celebrating their anniversary, but you know she's not going to be able to hang hang out, be with them on a Saturday, because she has plans. So we also find out that Judy has moved from working with you know in the AIDS wing to working in you know the labor and delivery. And we also see Blanca. So Blanca meets a patient by the name of Safari who just tested positive. So Blanca is just giving her her Blancaisms. You know she's reassuring her that. You know, you can live a long and healthy life. Look at me. Like, I got diagnosed with HIV years ago, 
and you know with this advance in medication i'm able to live my life you just have to follow the doctor's orders and she asked her, do you have any family that you friends or family that you want to call she says no like i don't talk to my mom or dad so then blanca says you know she gives her the information for the boss she says come here saturday you know this is our community come you know feel at home oh my screen closed i didn't know that um where we at all right, you guys, and then we see the lady. So this scene, I was like, okay, this is giving Sex in the City vibes with Blanca, Electra, Lulu, and Angel. I'm like, this is giving very much Sex in the City vibes. And I was like, what year did Sex in the City come out? I know it was the late 90s. I guess it was 98 because everybody's, you know, dealing with the, doing the Sex in the City thing, going to lunch, having, you know, the, the drinks and everything. And, you know, Electra's like, she don't know, know what Sex in the City is. I'm with you, Electra. I didn't, I didn't know what Sex in the City was either. I knew what it was. But my family, well, did we have HBO? My aunt did. But, you know, they would watch, monitor what we would watch on television. <laughs> so we find out that Electra is no longer in the phone sex business. She's moved over to webcams because that is more lucrative. Which is so interesting. It's still lucrative today. I mean... You know, you got people who do Pornhub, OnlyFans, and they make decent money. They make very good money from that shit. So she's right. It's it's not so much so. It's still about the fantasy, but now you can actually see the person doing whatever. Um, you know, Lulu, she's getting ready. To, she's work. She's still working, and they're moving her over to the tax department. And Angel is enjoying motherhood. And then we find out that Blanca is a nurse. So then, you know, Blanca tells them to come to the ball and they're like, um, you know, Lou's like, it's tax season, so can't do that. Um, Angel was like, yeah, my kid, no. Electra was like, yeah, no AC in there? Absolutely not. So then we go over to the ball and we see Ricky at the ball. And Ricky is a father, a house father now. He's the father of House of Evangelista and he has his own kids. And Blanca is the grandmother. He's also working with Destiny's Child. And, you know, we see the kids. They run the ball. They, you know, they do the ball. They win. And then, you know, Electra is there to present Blanca with the Legendary Mother Award. And every the whole family is there just to support um, Blanca. And that's actually kind of where the episode ends. You know, the new girl, um, Safari, she showed up and Blanca told her, you know, you're going to walk your first ball tonight. And then we see Blanca, you know, she's getting ready to leave. She heard Pray Tell's voice, but then there was a janitor there or a custodian, which, what do you call them? I don't know. I don't know the correct term for them. But, you know, she did that. And then we see her leaving and she gives her last Blanca speech to another house. And it's actually the same speech that Pray Tell gave to her and Ricky and Angel in the first season when they lost their first ball. And that's it, you guys. The end of Pose. Can't believe it is done. Yeah, I can't believe it's over. Really enjoy Pose. Really thoroughly enjoyed the show. I will miss the show. You know, even with this season, although it wasn't as good as it had been, I still enjoyed it. I still stuck with it. I just I think we could have done better. I think we could have done better with some certain things. But overall, I'm satisfied. And like I said, I'll definitely miss the show. But you guys, please let me know in the comment section what you guys thought about the episode, the series, the series finale, all of that in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else and share this video. Until the next time, you guys, stay safe out there, take care of yourselves, wash your hands, wear your mask or not, whichever one you choose to do, be safe and be blessed. Until the next time, you guys, bye.